Hi everyone, I am Natalie Satare. I am a makeup artist turned makeup educator and author of the book, Be Your Own Makeup Artist. And I am Tammy Parrish, an image consultant who works with ambitious professionals to help them look and feel even better in less time. Tammy and I decided that it would be a really fun way to spruce up our drab and athleisure routine with some fun spring makeup and fashion trends that we can probably all use right now to just make ourselves feel a little bit better and a little bit more put together and a little bit more confident for the random errands and video conferencing calls that we have. All right, I'm excited. Let's go. So should we talk about the first pairing as being minimalist wardrobe and yellow eyeshadow? That could work. <laughs> okay. Do it. Well, I mean, I'd like to talk about the fact that we're in a new time period and consumerism is less popular than before, you could say out of necessity. But I just read today that the retail industry in 2020 is going to be lose something like $300 billion, which is actually only 15%. And I feel like we're talking about trends in this series. But also, I think it's, it's about being creative, right? And it's fun to know what's, what the trends are, but it's also fun to then go into your wardrobe and say, okay, how am I gonna, how am I gonna make this work? Or how can I use this as inspiration to pick something that's flattering to my coloring, but also my personality and my goals? So I love, I can't say I like a minimalist wardrobe because I'm not a minimalist. But the idea that you keep it simple. So I think one thing I wanted to talk about is trench coats, because most people, do you own a trench coat, Natalie? I actually don't anymore. Okay, I, tell me. I'm one of those rare people. I'm on the hunt for the perfect trench coat. Oh, so you like it. You like I love trench coats. Okay. I've outgrown, not outgrown, but I've definitely. I had some beautiful hand-me-down trench coats from my grandmother, and they're gorgeous. Oh. Yes, but they're they're dated, and they just don't fit me perfectly. Like they fit her body perfectly, and we had totally different body shapes. And so, any advice on how to find the perfect trench coat would be awesome. <laughs> well, what part of it doesn't fit you? I have really long arms. My grandmother was petite. And so I have had some of her jackets taken, you know, the sleeves taken down. Yeah. But I'm, I have a, we just have opposite body types. Okay. So I feel like when you're younger and you don't care as much, it's okay. But right. now I do care more about how my clothing fits. And then also age shows. And so I feel like. I'll just keep them in the closet, nicely folded. It's a good memory, but they just don't suit me anymore. And I haven't really been able to buy ones since, because I don't know. Right. Like, there's so many choices. Analysis paralysis. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to plug this in, because I have a little background noise here. Um, so what I did, actually, this season, spring of 2020, the trench coat is in again. And I mean, it never went away, but this year, so what's different about it? And it's the details. So things like color blocking, uh, having some pleats going on, some leather trim with a cotton trench coat. Uh, and actually I'll show you a couple of examples. Let me pull up my screen here. Here we go, share. Yeah. Oh, those are pretty. So just gonna zoom in. Um, yeah, and then right there in the middle, I've got ruffles even. And then on the left, the black and khaki. 
-hmm. And that's actually with leather. And you've got these extreme shapes if you keep going left. And here you've got this sort of asymmetrical detail. And then you get into color blocking and you've even got these sort of traditional plaid, right? Mm -hmm. But in these panels. And yeah, if, you're, if your arms are extra long, that's a challenge. Because of course, if you've got short arms like me, you can just chop the sleeves off. Um, but the other way around doesn't work. So over here, I wanted to show also, um, you've got a blue one down here on the right with pleating. So that's a really elegant version from Valentino, of course. Not a bargain. <laughs> Like that's the one that I was drawn to. Yeah. But just, the, just not the color. Yeah. Not the color, but yeah. that I, to me is so elegant. I'm sure you can find that, that idea even in a knockoff and in a, in a more, probably a khaki. But you also can tell by the fabric that that's a much drapier. It's not, it's not meant to be worn in the rain. Um, but also what's fun, you've got this guy over here. Um, so that's a a fun color and it's actually a fake it's not vinyl it's le uh, sorry it's not leather it's a vinyl 60s style um so let me get out of there and what i was going to show is just i pulled out this is my out of my closet um so this i have i have the short arms this is a gray it's it's not really waterproof but it's you know it's okay in the light rain and i so I've got short arms and I had to have this altered, but that's okay. Cause even with the detail, you know, you can get the arms shortened the length. Yeah. The length, it's just a trial and error. But, um, once I took this to the dry cleaners, yeah, it's dry clean only and they lost the belt. So I've just been wearing it without a belt, but now I thought, okay, this is the season. I just took a, a regular old belt and I'm going to wear it with this or, you can try it with a scarf, like, you know, depending on what look you like, right? This is a totally different look. But if you've got any long rectangular scarves, just use this as a belt. Oh, that's genius. Uh, and this is totally a like, really different look, obviously. Pull this over here a little bit. Yeah, I would never have thought about using a scarf. Yeah, so just imagine you tie this around. Um, yes. And, you know, or if you want to go, so that's obviously kind of silly and fun. And you could also go more traditional because polka dots are in this year. So, I do also, love yeah, it's more classic, right? So I can see this with mm -hmm. like a, a little cigarette pant and your ballet yeah. flats. And this is more your jeans or your jeans, right? Um, yeah. And then this is <laughs> literally vintage. This is from the 70s. And I bought That's, it in a, like, yeah. But it's now in, in style. <laughs> of course. So it's got that plaid trim um, even there, which you don't see that, but you know, and I could change the buttons and make it more interesting. So these are some it's trenches. Chic. But um I where really should it trench hit? Like should it hit in between your like in on your quads or should it hit at your knee? Or can you talk to kind of yes where the trench coat should hit? Yeah it really depends on your leg shape. So, and whether you're going to be wearing it with pants or skirts, like I, um, so typically you don't want to end the coat or at the skirt, the hem of the skirt or anything at the widest part of your body, unless you want to accentuate that. So wherever the garment ends, that's the eye is going to go there and the eye is going to go like this. <laughs> so I have really big calves, so I never end a skirt or, or a coat or a dress at the widest part of my calf because I don't want my calves to look even wider. So right. I then pull it just above because I'm also petite, as in not tall. So I like to look as long as possible. 
and I don't want to wear anything too long because that makes me look shorter. Because then all you right. see is like this long column of clothing color and then these little bit of leg and shoes. So it, yeah, I look dumpy. So for me, the best length is right under the knee because that's a narrow part of my leg. That's genius. It's kind of like eye makeup. <laughs> you don't want to take anything too low because what it's going to bring you down. So Unless you're up on your eyes. <laughs> tell me about your eye makeup. So I don't know if you can see, I can take off my glasses, but I am wearing one of the big trends. I'm not a huge makeup trend person, but I do appreciate trends and how they tell a story of time right? You can look at the 80s, the 90s, the 20s, the 30s, right? And say, see the makeup and see how that was a trend. And you can see when it was done really well. And you can see when it was kind of just trying hard. And so one of the big trends right now is bright yellow eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. And I am wearing a very bright eyeshadow, as a matter of fact. And I even made it brighter by putting a cream gold right under this beautiful oh. yellow shadow. Okay. Right. There's no reason why any normal person, unless they are really into having fun with color and makeup, would need this palette. I use this palette mostly for editorial shoots, fashion shoots, the one-off request. I one time had a young lady for her prom who wanted a red eye like a very red eye and so of course I reached for this palette um let me I can show you a couple other yellows that they're not they don't have to be as obnoxious I have to I'm blind without well lying. what's what I have to say is when you I mean I saw you put it on of course I noticed it but once when you have the glasses on unless you're standing there with your eyes closed I don't notice it that much I mean I notice it but it's subtle it seems subtle right with the glasses and most people have a little bit of warmth in their eyes even blue eyes even brown eyes I mean very very rarely do I see somebody that has just completely cool eyes normally this some sort of speckle of gold or a, a warm color right I mean the eyes have so many colors in it so a lot of times you can find that color of yellow or gold and then that, and then, then you know, that's your yellow, mm -hmm. I feel like, or you could just do a really, I was going to show you another example of a yellow. So this is obviously oh, wow. that, that nobody needs, um, but you know, you can do a gold yellow, yep. but you can also do a, like a pretty, um, I don't know. It looks that's kind much of, cooler. Yep. Much cooler, yeah, definitely cool. Much less it's not red, even, right? It's pretty, and it's it's very, it's a pastel, you know. But you could even mix, you know, if you want to just you want that yellow, but you don't want it so intense. Depends on your eye shape too. I have deep set eyes, so a lot of times the color is not just right there in your face. So I think having fun with it, even trying a you know a yellow eyeliner and a creamy one and just kind of smudging it, you can get that effect. So it's a fun pop of color and yellow makes us happy and makes us feel warm inside. And so I feel like during this time, who is it gonna hurt? It's not gonna hurt anybody. Right. It'll just be fun and then you wash it off. And maybe with all these video calls, people, you know, you'll hold someone's interest longer, right? Because they'll think, oh wow, what is it about her? Different. Yeah. And then you have, and so of course we're on a video, we have all the lights and I'm wearing my glasses. But you know, if you were in person and you saw this, you would see that it looks probably a lot more intense in real life. Okay. So you can actually use the whole video conferencing to your advantage and the fact that it's gonna be a lot more subtle than it would be if we were meeting in a face-to-face, -face, you know, intimate conversation. But if you're like on a stage, if you're presenting, nobody's gonna really see it, you know, unless you would, you would have to really kind of do more theatrical makeup. So I think it's a fun trend and I think it will remember this 
2020 yellow eyeshadow. And I think it'll be fun. I've seen a lot of makeup artists just having fun out there putting on some yellow eyeshadow. So nice. Yeah. I like warm ones too. If if you had to pick one, everybody go for the warm yellow. It always is more youthful. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the tips and we hope you'll follow us on social media at the links listed.